Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. <coughs> uh, my name is Mohamed Taman. Okay, I'm uh, working for a company called eFinance. It's uh, responsible for uh, providing e-payment services for all over the country, from tax customs, uh, pensions, whatever the, the payment services for the company, uh, fuel subsidy system for the government-based uh, uh, projects. At the same time, for the, we, we're serving people, so we need to, to provide content on the hand, so we are developing mobile application as well, uh, like the other one. Uh, so I would like to share my experience in developing mobile applications, uh, hybrid one and uh, Android-based, Okay, on the single ID NetBeans, uh, you don't have to use NetBeans specific. So this is not just driving you to use NetBeans as Android. There's a lot of another uh, IDEs you can use, like ADT uh, uh, Android Development Kit, or the new one, which is Android uh, Studio, and many, many uh, of IDEs. The main idea behind using NetBeans is you are a Java developer, okay? You are using Java EE, Java AC, Java ME, sometimes Java ME, and you don't like, uh, you don't uh, want like to bother yourself with many IDEs to work with. I'm going to start Java in this way and this way. I'm involved to work with NetBeans development, and since Java 7.4, it has a great introduction for mobile development, especially hybrid, and introduction to HTML5, JavaScript, and CS3, which is uh, you can use for hyper development. And the other part is there is a plugin supports Android based development. Okay, we are going to see all of this. Uh, this is my bio. If you would like uh, to contact, to just any question, anything, you can capture that picture for this context. I'm an EC member, I'm GCP EC member, uh, executive committee member of GVCB community. I'm a system architect and design supervisor in my company. I'm consultant outside uh, speaking because of this I'm here. And I like photography and let's start our agenda, okay? going to introduce anything. We are going to explain the topic uh, that we are going to work with. Then uh, we will divide by 50% of, we'll do a code, code for project, NetBeans project from start, uh, from scratch. Then we will compile, we will test, we will add some feature, then uh, deploy it on the emulator and uh, devices. The same for, the same for uh, uh, Hyperdome. Okay, how many of you working with mobile development? Mm, a number, okay, <laughs> great. So we, do the, we are going to start from scratch as a concept, okay? Not buzzy con uh, talking about the concept, but the main important topics about the concept, how to develop, which type of development we would like to use. Okay, when I can go to hyper mobile development, when I can go native, when I can mix it, whatever the type, and why we should do this, and what is the pros and cons between every, each one, each development type. At the same time, we're going to see real uh, project. We are going to develop with each other on NetBeans for the post of the uh, uh, types that the time will allow us to do. Okay, this is our agenda. Let me, let's start. Why we need development? You know that now mobile developments, handheld uh, tablets, smart devices, with you all of the time. You don't need to check your mail, your content, your your daily news, whatever, from your laptop. Okay, it's on your smartphone. The same for your services. I would like to check in for the hotel. I would like to uh, reserve a, a booking flight, da, 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 all of this. So I need my content. And at the same time, you have internet based. Okay, we are so busy to have our laptop to open, just open to check mails, for example, it's TD task, and we have internet, internet everywhere. So you have to add this skill too. And when you develop for users, they expect that they need minimal, minimal 
access to the content by the handheld device that in his pockets or her pockets. So they need all of the services. For us, I'm working with a fuel subsidy system. Most of the people uh, don't want like to go to the website and register. Oh, so uh, I'm suppo you're supposed to provide me a mobile web mobile application so I can register with. Uh, okay, I would like to know my fuel uh, 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 amount remaining in my card, uh, my, my amount of the money in my, uh, like HSBC uh, uh, banking, if you're working with uh, another banking system, it's much better to, to do all your transactions and you're checking them from your mobile device. Therefore, all of the customer for your development expect that you will provide an easy way to access their content from your services, not just the web. Therefore, therefore, you have to add this skill to you. Now we are running in IoT, Internet of Things. This is the new era. We are working with an ECMM uh, meetings and all the embedded systems now, like Raspberry Pi, uh, Arduino. You have to play with, uh, this is a conceptual thing, the Internet of Things. Internet of Things are just smart devices or whatever device you can work with. Just interact with each other with ABI, specific ABIs and you get the result. Uh, for example, when we were in Java 1 last year, 2013, uh, we entered to the, for the first time to enter the, community, the keynotes, okay? Uh, without registering your name, without counting your uh, 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 your numbers, just enter to the hall, get your seat, and that's done. You are working. The, we know. I noticed something that uh, they control the temperature of the the room, the whole hall. Okay, uh, correctly. You don't feel cold or you don't feel hot. At the final of the presentation, we figure out that the seats have a sensors that take your weights, so or so they know that you are sitting here, okay? And at the same time, get your temperature and send it to the server, uh, okay? Then the server get this, control the uh, air conditioning by your uh, data gathering. This is sim some simple example of IoT. Another one, smart houses. You can control your home, open your internet on the laptop, open your laptop, prepare your cafe, uh, uh, just inform the, the garage door to open just by taking your car uh, picture, da, 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 all of this from your mobile and detection of your service, where are, where are you, and it will prepare your stuff at your home till tracking your destination. Okay, till you arrive at your home. This type of Internet of Things is involved in many, many, many uh, uh, industry, not just software industry. So you, you have to add these skills. From five years, you look to mobile development like, ah, it's a development tool like Java Card, like Java Embedded, and you don't want like to bother yourself with new addition of this. It's now, it's basic skill that you have to. Sometimes when you, you, you're going to propose yourself for a company, do you know some sort of mobile development, like hyper, da, 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 some of this? If yes, it's bonus, big bonus for you. So for IoT, don't wait till the end of the era, then everything work was IoT, then you have to access it. It's like take the cream from the first beginning. Okay. So we have to need this skill. Whatever the development, I'm here specifically talking about Android because we are Java developers. Maybe you are interested in working with Android. Android is Java-based system, okay? And Hyper, one of the most interested, another uh, development type, okay, that we will see here. Uh, okay, uh, for guys who are working with mobile development, how many types you can imagine you can develop? Mm -hmm. Types of development. Uh, it's native all the time. Not all the time. Now we have multiple types of development of mobile applications. One is mobile browser-based. When you go to the news 
website for news, for example, CNN, for BBC, you will find if you have entered from your smart device, you will switch it to another domain for mobile device to customize the content for your handheld or smart device. This is called mobile event. It's just normal web development, web, okay, with customization for your handheld health and resolutions and user experience. It's mobile-based, web mobile-based development. This one case, we will see when we are going. We 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 should go to this pass, and we, when we should go to the other passes. Uh, <clears throat> native hybrid. It's called hybrid. So when what's hybrid? It just mo web uh, mobile development, and you just wrap your content to be an app installed on your device, so you can work with your app offline. But it's a hybridation between web development and at the same time native development. But you don't, you don't really care about native because there is a tool to do all of the shelling and the native wrapping, okay? You just focus for your web development. The other one is hybrid ads, the same, but mix it. You have to do some Java code, some Objective-C, some C-sharp code, as well as your normal hybrid, because if you would like to control some feature of the hardware of the device directly, that you can do with your web mo mobile development. Web mobiles mean you are working with HTML5, JavaScript, and CSS. The other and normal one, it's native. Native means I'm working on Android based. So you are working Java based, no hyper, nothing else. So you com your target platform is Android. Your target platform is Objective-C with Apple Store, okay, uh, uh, BlackBerry Store, whatever it is. This is native. Okay. Any questions here? It's clear. Fine. When to use each type? So this is very big decision and confusing. Okay. Um, I can learn native, hyper, this stuff. Let's see. Uh, here is a web application, here is a hybrid apps and the native apps. Let's see in terms of uh, efforts and features. Features like accessing mobile features like camera, like content, like GPS, like da, 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 all of this. Which, uh, which type allow us to do this and which type we can't do this with. And at the same time, are the, your skills, based on your skills, what can you do and what you can't do and what skills you have to add to yourself to do each one. Okay, single effort mean for web, for web application, yes, it's single effort because I am Java, I'm a web developer. I'm not, I don't have a skills for Objective-C, Android, Java, even Java. I don't have C Sharp, uh, Blackberry, uh, SDK. I would like, I like my web application and I would like to submit this application to the store. You can take your HTML5 OK app store. I would like to submit this. What is this? I would like to submit IBA or ABA for Android. It's not AB, EBK. Okay, this is the, the like the ear, like the war. You can take your HTML, just put it in your war, upload the file, and use it for your distribution. You have you have to configure your application for the native content. This is for hybrid. Uh, for native, okay, you don't have a single effort. You have to use multiple efforts to submit for each platform. In web, web means I am migrating my website to mobile website. So there is no effort. And when you, when the user can open, open from Android phone, from iOS, there is no additional uh, uh, skill uh, efforts to do with multiple platform. Here, yes, you have to work with, you have your application, but with tools you can compile for nat uh, natives for each platform. But you, at the time, at one time, you don't have to use all, you don't have uh, in your company uh, to have uh, Android developer iOS developer, hi, uh, uh, oh, uh, BlackBerry developer, and uh, C-sharp developer for Windows, for example. Five developers, you, you have to have one. No web, okay, using Cordova or PhoneGab, wrap your application, target multiple platform. Server-side updates, yes, web applications can 
uh, afford you an update, frequent update without submitting your application again and again to the App Store, which take a lot of time for revision and hyper you have to do, but you can have a trick in this. You work with mobile, web, and you convert it to native. Okay, it's now in the App Store and the, at the, your mobile as offline. You can <coughs> get your updates from your mobile device from your server and update your content locally without submitting your application again. For native, you can do this. You have, even if you have single bug, you have to fix it and submit the application. It, for Apple, it takes two weeks for revision. It's for Android, it takes for, from three to, uh, to four hours. The process depends on some, uh, some points. Apple have multiple points to review. Android just uh, provide <coughs> preview your content is not malware. And the testing bugs, it's your own issue. Okay, for uh, fields like an app, this is one of the most and biggest issue for App Store that if you submit an application that's not look like an App Store application or the UI context, they will reject it. You will find all these gui guidelines in, Apple, in App Store. For Android, whatever you develop, put it in, in, your, uh, in, in the store, it's your reputation, not there. Uh, deploy to App Store. I can deploy web because it's not native uh, uh, installer. Uh, for hyper, for sure, you can do it. And for native, exactly, you have the same. Uh, this is the features that you can access from all of these types. For a speaker, a microphone, you can access from web app using audio uh, features of the HTML5. Uh, for Hyper, yes, because you have bridging uh, uh, plugins that bridge between your code in HTML5, okay, and the native code inside your uh, native uh, hardware. So you can connect directly to your hardware. For native, for sure. Everything for native is capable. You can do it because you are targeting your mobile. Uh, for camera, for GPS, it's supported because HTML5 have GPS location tracking. For web, you can use it for desktop. And for hybrid and uh, native application, most interested is you can use your assisted GPS chipset installed under your device. But for web, it's use the, your web connection or triangular one, which is 3G or 4G. At, uh, in, in web, sometimes for Wi-Fi, it's not more accurate. Uh, for 3G, it's more accurate for GPS. Uh, uh, chipset, it's more and more accurate. For accelerometers, you can use all of this. Local storage, yes, because HTML5 have local storage now in terms of sessions or local, or you can you have WebSQL, which is uh, database locally stored. You can store your offline content. Uh, one of these benefits I get use of because of my application is targeting all the countries, governments, and all of the databases, fuel station tracking locations, put it in the database. And I would like to access all of this information offline without contacting my, uh, uh, my server. I do this with local storage web SQL DB. <coughs> there is another standard, which is indexed DB. Indexed DB targeting, uh, uh, if you would like to target multiple platform like Windows Explorer, IE, Chrome, My, uh, Mozilla, Firefox, and Safari. Safari and uh, Chrome, the same work with WebSQL DB, which is SQLite standard, and uh, uh, I, IE and uh, My, uh, Mozilla Firefox doesn't work with WebSQL because it's dropped specification from W3C standard. It works with indexed DB. Indexed DB, which is key value based database and have map reduce functions and some sort of this. So if you would like to target all of this, you have to develop for, to check your, uh, uh, your uh, browser and call the relevant function for your uh, uh, browser. If you IE, you will work with indexed DB. If you are Safari or Chromey, you will work with WebSQL DB. Uh, app Store approvals requires, there is no appro store re re uh, approval requires for web apps. Why? Because it's not native. 
installers. For other posts, yes. Uh, access to the contacts and their communication. Uh, contacts, your contacts. If you would like to access contacts to retrieve information, uh, add new contacts, all of this. Contact book. Uh, all of this has plugins for Hyperd. And for sure, for native, you can access all of your ABIs. Intercommunication means you can connect like Facebook. When you work with Facebook, now the, and uh, would like to send me a message, for example, you have to, you, uh, Facebook prov provide you, okay, there is another application you can work with, which is Facebook Messenger. So you have to install it. Then you can go back and forth between the posts. This is intercommunication between both application. You can do all of this between all the apps and much provided by native applications. Full OS ABI access, no for pose. Yes here, for sure, because it's native. You are, you are on the hardware with your local development, native development. Notifications, which is notification that you get when new updates, appears on your applications, notification, hey, we have a new collection of a summer, uh, we are H&M, and, and we provide a summer collection, you will find this notification on your mobile. You can for web, but you can for hybrid and native. Why hybrid? Why? Because it's, there is a shell that make you contact, make your web application, can contact your native application, native API. So you can work with this. Most of the feature that provided by native, you can find it with hybrid mobile development. Local file systems, you can do it with hybrid and post. Network communication, yes, for all of this. Uh, in terms of not, you can ask me network communication. All of this have, can access network communication. Web app can't work with network communication. No, in terms of features you can use. Features like management of the life cycle of the, uh, the network communication, like if, if you are going offline, you would like to disable some features. If you are online, you would like to enable these features. So the user, this is the feeling of the connection and GPS and whatever your online content. Okay, I am now offline. I have to store the user content in the local storage. Ah, okay, I'm online. I would like to get all of this and submit it to the server. This is life cycle management. It's provided for both this and this, and less supported by web applications. Okay, and in web application, you can, always, you can work with offline application, which is specification of HTML5. Here has a different one, have the life cycle. Fully life cycle based on the native uh, ABI. Okay, too much talking. Let's compare it business. If you work in company, if you, you see it from business perspective, like, let's see the pros. Here are the native apps development and hyper development, okay? Left native, right hyper. You have a developer specialization and a gaining experience. What does it mean? It means that for each platform, you have to have a developer. On hyper, no. You know web development, just develop your site. Cordova, please compile for Android and iOS and all platform that I would like to support. You will have all the installers for each platform. That's it. great user experience for sure because you are working with like working with Java. I'm using Swing. Swing. This is a framework developed for user interface. Okay. Uh, so Android provide user experience, UI library you're using, so the context of the, all the applications the store, okay, have the same look and, look and feel. This is one of the mandatory requirement for App Store, which is Apple Store, okay? And you can fail if, you, if your application doesn't look like the native ABI. There is a lot of framework like jQuery Mobile, like uh, Topaco, like a lot of this can mimic the user interface of App Store applications, native. So you can get the approval of this. Uh, great functionality with hardware for sure, because there is no layer between the user and the hardware, just the application and the hardware dialectic, because it's native. Okay. Uh, on the other hand, a presence in multi-platform, you support multiple platform, 
okay, for large audience, if you would like to do this. Quicker and easier updates, as I told you, you can do it by just providing the like. Uh, sometimes when I open my HSBC account, okay, on, on the phone, I found, hey, please, I have an update, can I update? Not from the store, from inside the application itself. Uh, only a portion of the code different across platform. Sure, why? Because we're talking about, I'm getting my web application, wrap it, and to submit it. The wrap and the plugins, connections between your web application and all of this have to be translated into Java applications, into Objective-C code, into C-sharp code, into uh, BlackBerry Android code. So it's, it's, it should have some portion. If you'd like add functionality for this, you, have, you can go to work with this. And I, I, I had faced this as a problem. And I do it in the Java level coding with my hybrid one. I'll talk about this. On the other hand, requires specific development for each platform, for sure. Slower to run. And now it's this, it's obsolete because of you have four core on your smart device, you have quad processors, you have two gig processor, there is no more. The main issue is the memory. Always the main issue in the application, especially in the memory, for both. Okay, you have to manage your uh, variables, your content, your uh, updating, all of the, the mere performance. Maybe the term is slower to run, it's not slower to run, it's just the memory issue. Okay, so you have to take care of your memory uh, implementations. Uh, hyper tools are still relatively immature after Cordova and PhoneGap version 3.4. It's totally a major now. I didn't face bugs with them on multiple devices. I just uh, maybe some minor with the native code. When I open the, the project with Xcode, sometimes there is mm, uh, problems because Xcode maybe have a versions great, uh, uh, greater than the versions compiled and created the project with Cordova. A great risk of rejection, yes, as I told you, especially from App Store, not uh, the Android, uh, the Play Store, uh, because they have a very strict uh, guidelines. I have found this. Any questions? Clear now? Okay, let's move to the development. Okay, too much work. We now have four types of development. We will concentrate on native which is Android, and hybrid one. So what's the development requirement for hybrid development? We have to install Node.js, for example. And instead of installing the Cordova separately, PhoneGab separately, you have Node.js and you can update your software from Node.js. And you have all of the library, you have AngularJS, whatever you would like to use with hybrid. Any, any, any type of, it's web development, okay? It's web development, but you have to just tweak it for your device uh, experience. You can use jQuery uh, mobile, okay? So it's, get take, it, it's take care of the UI. You can use Topico, you can use, uh, uh, at the back end, you can use AngularJS requires, uh, you can use your custom code, whatever you want. It's mobile. What you would like to take care of, just the interface. Install PhoneGab, Cordova, if you would like to do it separately. If you do it from Node.js, you have all the libraries installed. You have to install it from GS for the first time. And install Git. It's required. Because I'm going to use NetBean. NetBean required that you have to have Git and Cordova library in your uh, uh, class pass. For mobile development, you have to, uh, any idea if you would like, but we are going to talk about NetBeans and we will see which features supported that make it easy for you to develop both of the applications. You have to have Android SDK. You have to have each SDK for each platform you would like to target. Okay, for hybrid. Because finally, Cordova used the SDK to compile to the native package. But without you worrying to, to understand the SDK, to enter to the creation of the project for compiling, running the emulator, just use one Cordova CLI, command line interface. Okay, Cordova run, 
Cordova test, Cordova create projects, whatever your platform, it's create project structure for all that platform. Then finally, compile Android, compile iOS, compile whatever you want. So you have to have each SDK for each platform you would like to target. Uh, there is, you need really to have a real device. Don't rely on emulators or simulators. I have faced a very big problem with this one in production environment, and I have to postpone my application for three days because we have a holiday Friday and Saturday till Sunday. And my, I have supposed to, to, to submit my application to App Store and iOS on Thursday. Everything is working correctly on emulator. Nothing failed, done working functionality. But when I deploy it on my friend, uh, my team uh, mobile, it fails. I don't know what is the problem. Then uh, I use the, the logging, look at, okay, I get the application. On the, I installed the application on the Android real device. From, from the emulator, I didn't find the log anything, anything uh, reported as a problem. When I connected to the real device, I found many problems preventing my application from starting. So what if I don't have real device? Uh, my advice is to, if when you work with emulator or simulators, there is difference between the two. Uh, in terms of just uh, uh, the testing on them. Uh, just test your UI. Don't test your functionality. Core functionality, don't test it. Don't rely on the emulator and simulator. Okay, just you would like to test the UI. It's consistent, it's okay, the look and feel. There is no problem. But when you test functionality, the read functionality, the calling of your local storage files, the, even the JavaScript. All of us know that JavaScript is not object-oriented, okay? And it can be parsed uh, uh, for the first time. Then the library, uh, it can be called. And real devices is treated as a, a, it's procedural. For example, when you access Google Map, okay, and you try to reference Google Map at the first line and it's not initialized, it will throw an error. This error, it may be JavaScript error, but will prevent your application from starting, your native application. This is the big problem. I found this problem, okay, this is undefined reference, undefined reference. Okay. On the emulator, there is no uh, any uh, 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 reporting for this problem on the emulator because it's considered it's, the, the running application like web browser, okay? But on real device, it's native because it's compiled native. So don't rely on your functionality on emulators. NetBeans NB Android, this is very interesting plugin that we are going to use and provide the you to create an Android-based application from NetBeans. Install OEM USB driver because on Windows especially, and it doesn't, uh, it doesn't matter on Mac because of, on Windows you have, to, uh, when you attach your device, the Windows see your device as a local storage. You can take it, it's not real device. Uh, all the OEM USB driver are listed on Android uh, website, which is develop, Android the developer website you'll find for major and uh, major uh, uh, brands like Acer, Sony, whatever, you can install it and the, uh, the Windows will see your applications, hardware, phone hardware. So you will find the, the, your hardware on uh, your ID. Enabling device option on device so you can debug. It's one of the most important. To enable the de developer options when you connect to your mobile. Because of you, you need to enable multiple features, logs, uh, maintain the log on the device or whatever the connection from the look at, your ID, you need to see everything, so you have to enable this. Uh, I pet everyone, okay, I pet everyone that have Android device, version four and above, from 4.2 to above, uh, to find developer option. Can you find it? Do you know the trick where? No, not just any. Grab your phone. Try to find it, show me. Do you have Android 4.2? So just developer option? 
Oh, which version you use? For where is it? Okay. Where is the developer options? Yes, because I didn't find it uh, at the first time. You have to go to the options, build version, about, build version, tap five times on build version, then you will find it enabled and previously. No, no, it's from uh, four platform, from 4.2 and above. Yes, on all devices. Uh, just a platform issue, not the, the hardware issue. <laughs> Uh, okay. For NetBeans, let's see what the, the features. NetBeans provide already support for mobile development for embedded and ME and uh, Java card for sure, and and now provide uh, development for Java-based system. Okay, which uh, which we are going to use using the NetBean Android now, and it's uh, Java uh, ID. And for Android, you have this uh, plugin. You can download it from this site or update it, okay? And you will find when you create your application structure like this, which is mimic the same structure that you created from uh, ADT or Android Studio. At the same time, excellent sub testing support, for sure. Has a testing running capability different from iOS and Android something like this. When you work with mobile development, you can use embedded WebKit browser from internal, from your, web, uh, from your Android directly, or uh, on Chrome, it has a plugin that you can, when you update on your code, just you see the reflection on, inside your mobile or, or your uh, uh, web browser without refreshing or redeploying. Uh, you have all the extension here for Android and iOS. You can run on the simulators, Android devices, on Chromey, on the devices, because of if, if you uh, working with web app development, not hybrid. For hybrid, you use simulators, and if you would like to use Android device, okay, and emulators. Here is Cordova, support for hybrid mobile development. Cordova for iOS devices, Cordova for iOS simulator and for emulator, and you can configure Cordova by adding plugins, and that we will see this. <coughs> Web and Hybrid has a nice JavaScript library support, okay, without downloading and searching headache. How? Now with, uh, in Java 8 and 7.4.1 7, uh, 7 and Java, uh, and sorry, NetBeans 8, you will find a library uh, 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 when you develop. You find JavaScript uh, tool that let you provide, uh, let you get the all the library from the internet. Just choose your library, add it. It will download and put it in your library folder without going to each site to download all the libraries I would like to. And you can update it if you would like to work with jQuery, jQuery mobile. Uh, Topco uh, uh, UI interface, and Angular JS, whatever, you can choose all of this from the ID. Okay, I would like to, to use those. The ID will install of them to you and put it in your library folder without going to five websites to download and bring the correct one for each uh, library you would like to use. Something like this. You find all the libraries and you can update and you can <coughs> provide the folder, choose whatever you want, and you will find at your hand. Cordova support, it supports uh, Cordova and PhoneGap, as, I, as you have seen previously, for developing HTML5, CS, and JavaScript. Uh, functionality, especially, it has very great support for HTML5 and, Java, and CSS and JavaScript features uh, inside the IntelliC and support inside the NetBeans. Support for adding Cordova plugins without using command line, okay? You have all the Cordova plugins, you can add whatever you want to work with, and then you will find the plugins with your application, and you can use the JavaScript version, and it will contact your native version without your, your interaction. 
Okay. Let's see coding. That's enough. Okay. Now we are going to see. Uh, uh, we are going to create. Okay, a simple application. Okay, it's native based Android, and do some editing and running this application in the emulator. Uh, and we will see the process of compiling and everything. It, five minutes we will take for this. We have this is prerequisite: creating project, coding the example, testing, compiling, dis dis distributing your applications. So I have installed NB Android, the plugin I have told you about, and when you install it, you will find the new category under uh, your Java development, which is Android. This will be added. Okay, you can choose your Android project, and you can add another project for your Android application. Test a project, you can use GUnit or whatever Java-based unit testing. It's fine. Okay, this is your name, the name of the application. This name will be provided to the users when you submit your application to the market. Take care of this package name. The package name should be, not should, must be unique for your entire application updates and even if you change the name. This is the, and uh, Google use this package name to identify your mobile application. You can change the name, whatever you want, as I did, okay, because I, I face experience with the users when they, when I call, it's called Benzinti, which is fuel station finders. They might, okay, they type B, A, not B, N. Then I, I have realized this from experience perspective, then I changed the name to B, A, N, Z, Benzinti, instead of Benzinti, okay? But you can't, in the middle, change the package name. If you change it, Google Play will consider the application as a different application and it will not update the existing one, it will add it as a new application. So you have two applications with the same name. Take care of this. The package name is very important. It's normal, it's normal Java package uh, naming, okay? Uh, cross, uh, uh, reverse uh, domain, Okay, naming like com, da, 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 whatever you want. Let's us. Uh, you have to provide a target, which target would like to, to support. Um, let's use. latest target. By the way, it get all of these targets from your Android SDK. Okay, you have installed. If you update it, you will find all these targets. Let's finish. What is a mouse? Built so we can get rid of this. Let's check something here. If you, this is the final one, which is Android application one debug and an aligned ABK. This is a native installer. You can upload it to apps uh, to Google Play and submit your application for. Uh, for the, your users. Uh, it uses all of Android, uh, Android SDK. It looks for Android SDK, then use uh, the batches used for building and for anything. It doesn't make any magic here. So you have to install Android SDK. Now we have built our system. Let's play with uh, Sources, layout, for example. OK. 
okay run it comes here because it's yes it's opening the emulator because it's uh, the default one installed there is no real device connected if there is a real device you will find an option would you like to run on an emulator or real device so you have to choose between them uh, by the way android uh, emulator is very 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 slow in normal cases in both windows and mac and you have to install imax imax which is hyper virtualization uh, for uh, intel based systems because android default is based on arm processors and we uh, when they start up they try to trans translate from arm to intel based to take too much time intel add images images for intel based and uh, you have to enable the virtualization level on the hardware i have blog about this uh, and so it's just running in two minutes uh, and w less than one minute before it takes 10 minutes to just run by the way this uh, this plugin uh, is what you can install from SDK here is our application running hello world from Java uh, from JE conf where is the application it's uh, <laughs> can find here main activity one it is our application compiled running on your device and you can take this apk and connect your device and you will find it on your device this is how you can develop an easy way your android based systems any questions you have to learn in Android skills to, the, uh, to build your final application, for sure. And uh, another, you can't work with G8 because the SDK is not, is not ready for Java 8. You will get compiler errors. The final Java 7. And you can use Java 7 features. Okay. Developing, if I would like to, to develop hybrid mobile application, how can I do it? With hyper mobile application, we have the same life cycle. Okay, but let's see what's called phone gap. Do you, do you hear about phone gap? It's just a service provided from, from Adobe. It was previously an open source uh, project under Apache, and uh, now it's acquired by uh, Adobe. Uh, and provide you support for building your application, HTML application, from a zip content or from your GitHub account, and wrap it, and provide you multiple installers for different platforms from the web, so you can install on your uh, uh, on your friends' devices, on your devices, whatever you want. Just building capabilities and services for your application. <coughs> At the same time, it's pro uh, underlying. It uses Cordova for wrapping your HTML file. You you are you you write your application in terms of HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. So you have to wrap it as a native, as you see the ABK file. How to do it using this one? What is the magic here is Cordova using standard structure for each platform. It's downloaded from internet and putting your resources inside this application and call it as a web container from your content view, from your hardware, uh, sorry, from your Java application or uh, uh, your native code. Okay, this is the magic. Just opening your index dot html file for your, from your web view content from your android application or objective c or whatever so it's a wrapper for your application just equal to this and wrap it to application the same thing is a bridge if you need to cont if you these capabilities like geolocation contact camera uh, accelerometers whatever cordova provide multiple plugins that you can work with to add these features to your code. The plugins has JavaScript interface. Then you have multiple platform. Let's see the demo. 
now we have Android one. Uh, you don't have to use any plugins. It's supported by default from uh, 7.4 and NetBeans. Uh, let's query HTML. Did you see Cordova? When you work with mobile development, you will figure out that the same requirement will be required for the package name, the name, da, 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 all of this information. Okay, I would like to use Cordova. Then, what is application name? HTML file application. Okay, next. Which template would you like to use? Would you like to use HTML5 boilerplate? Would you like Angular GS? Whatever, this is your web application. Okay, no, please let me choose the standard one, Cordova Hello application. It's fine for me. Or you can say no template. I'm going to start from scratch. Here you can choose your JavaScript libraries. Uh, okay, I would like to use jQuery, for example. Here is all the jQuery plugins, libraries, whatever you want, jQuery. Dash mobile, for example, yes, I would like to use 1.4.2. You can press update and you will get latest version of all the libraries. the same as jQuery itself. Next. If you don't like, or won't like to use uh, the local libraries, you can use the CDN version. Here is the most common part of our application. Application ID, which is the package name, that should be unique for our platform. Okay. And here is your, the application name for your users and the version name for your users. It's different from code base name inside your manifest file or Android manifest file, which is differentiate for Apple for Apple store or for Android store, there is two versions you have to provide. The application version, this, this version go to the user. The user can see, oh, we are version 8, 5, 2, 3. And the other version, which is code based, is for the app store to identify this is up, an update version 2, version 3, version 4, and they can update. If you submit, you change the version name only and leave the uh, the base code version to 2, it will not submit it. You have already the version 2. It will get information from App Store that you already have the version. Did, okay, so this doesn't affect the, your versioning. It's affect just your showing your user. What's most important here is this. Finish. You will find the structure, it's like normal web application. You will feel that you, you can test it in your uh, device, in your mobile. Uh, it's, it's just getting the libraries downloading. Okay, let, let's talk about the final, the final part until the project is created and you will see it. <sighs> Testing, okay. Always try to test on real device, as I told you, okay? For performance and final functionality. Use simulators and emulator for your GUI testing, but not for functionality. Bear this in mind. On the other hand, for hyper, okay? Applications make it web enabled. Why? You don't, you don't need to bother yourself on running your application each time on real device or emulator. It takes time. So you can open your browser, test your application, it's web-based. And then at the final production, you, ha you have to change your clicks to tabs because of the difference between mouse and the between, difference between the touch. For example, if you rely on, on, an, on click and using jQuery, you have to change it to tab because on click, for example, takes 13 seconds 30, oh yes, 30 seconds on the mobile device to rely this is a single tab. Good. No click on the mobile, it steps. So uh, the mobile waits 30, 30 seconds if you are running for, is this is a tab or double tab? 
if you if you just switch it to tab you'll get performance peak for this just tapping you will find the navigation you don't have to wait for 30 uh, sorry not second mainly second to switch not second <laughs> i'm sorry for this uh, the, the main the main testing issues you can uh, can uh, bear in mind you should bear in mind okay uh, this is the resources if you would like take a picture for this and this is the tools skills you will find interesting ios device development center and android development guides and the uh, netbeans android version let's back to our application to finalize it here is uh, our application you'll find signed root css images and your javascript it's normal HTML5, no difference. Just putting some metadata, metadata for mobile, for viewing portion of this scaling capabilities, and uh, your normal HTML development. This application simply showing Hello World from Cordova with uh, Cordova logo okay and uh, some animations using css3 you can find all of this in index.js when you work with java ee you always try to use model view controller you can do this you can use for example jmobil as a just html no css no javascript and your javascript at the back end as a, if it's a library like this or angular js for modular one and your back end could be files could be local database could be maybe anything you can proxy it uh, okay i would like to run this application that's all you don't have anything more than this normal web device from this uh, by the way from here you can choose if you would like if you are Developing this for the first time, you need to test it on the browser. So you can work with embedded or Chrome based. And then at the final production to see the, the real functionality and GUI, you can work on simulators like this. Because the plugins will not work in web. All the plugins, okay, work will work on the emulator or real device. Okay, the final try and go yes. to the launch. Let's download library for iOS because I instruct to use Cordova emulator. You can it's download it. You can use Android. Let's see it on an, an iOS. For sure you have to, to have iOS SDK. Uh, and because of I'm on Mac, you have your SDK by default. This is the main SDK. I'm going to run tools, EVDs. I'll run my emulator. This 
this is hex, which is Intel based. It's running. I think that I'm configured plugins yes. Oh, all the plugins has enabled Because of the plugins, it takes too much time to download all the plugins. I don't need them. Building, compiling, preparing the package, make a first gate of the final EBK, converting compiled files. This is your hybrid mobile application. Completely JavaScript, HTML5, and CSS. Combined to EB, which installed on your device. Thank you for listening. Thanks for attendance. Uh, any questions, I'll be available. OK. And uh, maybe I see some of you for tomorrow, WebSockets based. It's master class, and we will do Talking. Okay.